like I'd cut off a lock of my hair and written him a note in my blood or something. Like stage door can be wonderful. Stage door can also be pretty awful. I was honestly horrified. I was really close to calling 911. I didn't, I mean, I didn't know what to do. Yeah, there's no arrest! Bye guys. Do you mind if I just give my little spiel really quick? Yeah, sorry. Hi friends, how are you? I hope that you're very, very well. Stage door. It's a theatrical tradition that goes back well before our time. And for those who don't know, it's when an audience member will go to the stage door, the exit used by cast, creatives, people who work in the theatre, to ask for an autograph or a photo or just to have a personal experience with somebody who was in the cast of the show. Stage dooring continues to grow in popularity year on year, but the term stage door Johnny, referring to somebody who spends a lot of time at stage door, goes back to like 1912. So it's safe to say that this is certainly not just a modern phenomenon. I feel the need to talk about a particularly awful stage door experience I had last week and I would love to hear other people's opinions on it but first I think I should give a little bit of context. So I've been on both sides of the stage door as an actor and also as a fan. I've had amazing experiences, I've had awful experiences and I certainly have pretty complex feelings around stage door as a whole generally. First things first, no one is entitled to a stage door experience. It should not be expected, it is not part of your ticket price and if you do stage door after a show you should be prepared to to not meet the person that you want to meet or possibly not meet anyone. However, is there a responsibility of theatres and cast members when they know that audience members are outside stage door in possibly dangerous areas? Should theatres hire security? Should someone tell fans if they know that their fans are waiting and they're not coming out? I'm intrigued to know what you think. Um, it's a very nuanced situation and what happened last week I just think is a good example of the dangers of stage Stage door in. So I have spoken about it before. Personally, I don't love stage door in. I know actors are tired. I personally feel really awkward just in myself because like I don't always know what to say. But at the same time, as an actor, I've loved stage door. It's amazing to hear someone tell you that your performance like affected them in some way or meant something to them. And like if you're doing a long run, it can really like kind of break up the monotony of performing the same show every day to like a dark, faceless audience. And it's just nice to meet people as well. Sometimes you meet really interesting people. I've also spoken about this before in a really old video, but my ex-brother-in-law was not a theatre person at all. And we took him to go and see the Book of Mormon. Afterwards, he was like, oh God, I wish I could just like go and congratulate them on the show that they did. Um, and I said, yeah, you could. Like he didn't know what Stage Dorian was. And when he went to Stage Door, it was one of my favourite theatre experiences ever because he shook everyone's hand in the cast and and he was super respectful and thanked them for their performance and their time for speaking to him after and it was just a really lovely like wholesome thing to see like stage door can be wonderful stage door can also be pretty awful I've had moments on both sides of the stage door experience where it's been awkward uncomfortable and just downright upsetting sometimes people get over familiar people say the wrong thing actors can be rude other fans can be pushing and shoving and it can be a recipe for disaster it is also pretty standard that when a show has a big name in it or if a show knows that their fans particularly often stage door and crowds gather that theatres will have barriers and will oftentimes hire security. The security is mainly there to protect the performers but they will obviously step in if something else is going on and they need to protect somebody. So last week I went to see Little Shop of Horrors off-Broadway at the West Side Theatre on West 43rd Street in New York City starring Darren Criss and Evan Rachel Wood. It was my fiance Lucy's 30th birthday and she is a huge Darren fan so we knew that we had to book tickets and we had to go and see the show. And so it wasn't even a question that she would want to stage door. I probably wouldn't have personally but I was more than happy to go with her. I'm a huge Darren fan as well but again I just don't really like stage dooring myself. So Darren has been known over the years that when he is in a show he will stay for hours after and sign and take photos with everybody out there. His wife is currently pregnant with their second child and just for his own health, I guess in a post-Covid world and him needing to look after himself, he decided that he wouldn't be stage dooring for Little Shop of Horrors. However, each night he has been coming to the stage door to just say hello and thank fans for being there and when we went to stage door, we expected just that, nothing more. Lucy had a birthday badge and was really hoping that if Darren saw it, he might say happy birthday, but like, that was it, you know? I 
had also seen on Twitter and on Reddit that because Darren wasn't stage dooring, if you went to the stage door waiting for his like little speech that there would be somebody there to collect playbills um, and if you wrote your name on it then they would take them in, he would sign them and then after he did his speech they would hand them back out. I wasn't 100% sure this would happen and I really wanted Lucy to have a signed playbill so thankfully the show were doing like a, a partnership with Broadway Cares and audience members could buy a signed playbill so with the proceeds going to the cause. So on the way out I went back and bought one of those for Lucy as an extra birthday present. So anyway after the show we go down to stage door and there was a pretty hefty chunk of people there. There wasn't anyone from stage door collecting playbills to be signed like I'd seen people talk about online so we thought Mm, maybe that means that he will be coming out. The only reason I say that is because there was only two more days of shows left in Darren's run for Little Shop. So maybe it was wishful thinking, but maybe also not out of the realm of possibility. So anyway, this is all somewhat relevant. After about probably 20 minutes of being out there, Major Attaway, who played the voice of Audrey 2, came out, signed a bunch of playbills, and basically said like, oh, you know, guys, everybody will be coming out. Um, they're just all in there kind of chatting and stuff so like don't worry they will be coming so everyone continued to wait a couple more people came out but didn't really stop and the theatre like box office and everything had all been locked up and closed at this point so after about 45 minutes of being out there and the only thing that anybody had heard was from somebody else in the cast saying yeah they're coming out and expecting Darren to come out and at least do his speech, we were all still waiting. And oh my God, side note, but God, it was so cold. Like, whew, Friday had been pretty warm. So, so I was in Crocs. And if they say that New York is a wind tunnel, my Crocs, with all the little holes, became like a wind tunnel in a wind tunnel. Honestly, my poor little toes. I was so cold. <laughs> I was so cold. But anyway, it's cold, it's dark. It's a Friday night in New York City on a back side street, not far from Times Square. And there's a man who decides to come up and talk to the people on the street. So before I go into it, I've been to New York a bunch of times. I've lived in London for 13 years. I've seen some dodgy stuff. I've been in some pretty unsafe situations in these cities, but New York on this visit felt different. New York does have a serious drug problem and a serious mental health problem. In London, yes, you sometimes see someone alone, distressed, tired, like talking to themselves or, you know, kind of harassing people for want of a better term. But in New York, on this trip, I was seeing these kinds of people with this particular behaviour like multiple times on the same block. Countless people like shouted into the void or collapsed or clearly distressed. It was heartbreaking to see and it was really scary to experience and it is such a sad indication of the lack of support for addicts and people struggling with mental health issues. Unfortunately, I felt pretty consistently unsafe on this trip to New York last week. So anyway, there's a pretty big group of people still at stage door and this man comes over and he's trying to talk to people and he's being quite aggressive and he's being quite aggressive in his nature. He was a little bit further down from me so I didn't catch what was happening exactly right away but I did see a girl at the front maybe like two people down from me say very calmly like please just leave us alone we're just waiting here the man took great offense to this and was fully then harassing this girl he was shouting in her face like right up close to her face shouting to the group about her he was calling her a bitch he was calling her a racist for not wanting to talk to him and various offensive things at one point he started talking about his penis and then asking around who had toilet paper because he was going to take a shit it was very scary and he was like walking up and down in front of the group because obviously you know like there was one barrier between the the audience and the stage door and he was like walking up and down in that area and shouting very much like at the whole group but the majority of it was directed at this one girl and what I will say is 
she was so calm she kept her cool this entire time and I really do think that her keeping such a calm steady like relaxed voice and stance really kept the situation at a certain level as he didn't kind of have anything to play with nobody was like going up against him personally like I had no idea what to do I'm very much a person who stands up for people and I was standing there like paralyzed with not knowing what to do like I say her like stoicism was keeping in the situation at a certain level and I was like if I go up and like start trying to defend this girl and everything am I gonna escalate the situation so I was scared to speak up we were looking around for if there was any kind of security to which everybody said no there's not I was really close to calling 911 I didn't I mean I didn't know what to do or banging on the stage door the frustrating thing as well was the West Side Theatre's stage door doesn't have like a buzzer or anything so you also kind of can't see how to even open the door like there wasn't even a handle or anything so I'm like does this door only open from one side? Is it just gonna be, is it gonna like draw his attention? I don't know, I, di I didn't know what to do. Very frustratingly, there were some men in the group of fans at the stage door and the guy who was like shouting at us all and this girl, he apologized multiple times to these two men in the group um, saying things like, oh, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry you have to see this, but this bitch needs to be told what's what and like, and this bitch needs to be told off and things like that. And one of the guys just like kept his head down and tried to ignore it and the other guy was like oh no don't worry about it man I was honestly horrified. So throughout this experience, um, the group of fans quickly went down in numbers from about probably over 40, I would say, to around 10. The two guys who were in the group also left. And so it was basically this man just shouting at a group of about 10 women and girls. I think the people who remained were, were somewhat paralyzed by fear and like not knowing what to do. Like personally, I couldn't leave because I couldn't, if it did escalate, I couldn't leave this girl in this situation if that makes sense. Lucy ended up trying to kind of get the attention of people walking past and she did manage to get the attention of a guy walking to see if he could help and thankfully he did. So this man had been standing and shouting at us for about 15-20 minutes, shouting in this girl's face, threatening to expose himself and all it took was this man walking past to literally say, oh mate, leave them alone, it's just a bunch of girls, come this way, come with me and he left and that was literally it. I was astounded that that was all it took. When he left, the girl who was in front like broke down into tears and I went over to talk to her and I was so disappointed in myself for not saying something. But like I say, I do think it was her calmness that kept it from escalating more. But I'm so thankful to her and so proud of her. I didn't get her name, but what a legend. I mean, she like protected us all and she was an absolute star. Um. <laughs> So anyway, about five minutes after this, it's over an hour after the show finished and Darren popped his head out of the stage door for his speech. So when he came out, Darren did comment on like, he was like, oh, there's less people here than I expected. Um, there's like, less many of you than I thought that would be here. And we all kind of tried to tell him, well, there were more people here, but everybody left because we were all being harassed and because it was dangerous. And Darren was like, no, no, guys, um, stop talking. Like, let me do my speech. Um, yeah, I was like, no, no, I was like, no, no, guys, like, let me do my little speech, please. And he basically said he'd be quick because it was so cold and he wasn't wearing a jacket, but said thank you to everyone and said he wasn't going to sign stuff. It's, everything's bottlenecking. There's so many people coming by last month, weekend after having nine weeks to come and really sign I'm sorry, I'm going to be like, I have sent you. But, um, thank you, thank you. So, aside from the people that have heard this many times, I know it's very cold, I get you one piece. Uh, I just spent two hours pretending you weren't there, so I'm going to spend at least two minutes looking as many of you in the eyeballs, except for people that don't want to look me back in the eyeballs, <laughs> and, and just say thank you for coming. I realize a lot of you guys are coming from outside the city, outside the country. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. 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 What's, what's London. 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 London! 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 Korea, very yeah. cold. Wow. Korea, wow. All over the world, very amazing. Thank you for coming out all this way. Um, because it's very cold, I don't have anything going on right now. Um, I know, instead of doing the selfie signy thing, which I'm very proud of, I'm used to have a reputation of staying out for like hours and doing this but uh that's kind of got me in trouble with my health and also with being out too late uh so i hope you guys will understand that instead of the selfie signing thing because if i if i do like four or five i'll inevitably leave some of you disappointed so i'd rather just disappoint like all of you <laughs> <laughs> so um but i do like to come out 
and acknowledge you and thank you guys because more expensive than this and insanely expensive tickets is your time and your energy. And I've given this bill many times and I will continue to give it to the rest of my life. Uh, I so appreciate the investment of your time. birthday to Lucy and then went inside and it was all over. Thankfully Lucy was very happy that Darren had noticed her badge and said happy birthday and I personally was very happy that we could go back to our Airbnb so I could defrost my toes. <laughs> I cannot lie though I was left frustrated and somewhat angry and I don't know if I have a right to or even who my anger and frustration should be kind of directed towards. Like is it the responsibility of a theatre to have security or some form of surveillance over audience members who are stage dooring and are on or around their property. This was an off-Broadway production, not just in location and theatre size, but very much in kind of production values, etc. But this theatre, they were very much charging Broadway prices. Broadway shows, more often than not, have security at stage door. Like, did the West Side Theatre not have security because they know their stars aren't going to stage door and therefore their fans' safety isn't a priority? Did they not have the budget? Did they not think about it? I don't know the answer, but I do think in the current New York climate with crime rates rising exponentially with an audience of young fans that there is some duty of care. And listen, before anybody gets the wrong idea, I think Darren is a great guy. I think he has always been really lovely to his fans. I remain a fan and I don't blame him for what happened on Friday night. However, I do think personally when you are the top billing of a show and you know you have fans, primarily pretty young female fans, who you know are going to be waiting outside for you, that you should have some consideration for them and their safety. Like if Darren knows that he's not going to go out and sign and also knows that people also are going to wait outside for him just to say hello, why wait over an hour after curtain to do your little head pop around the door to say hello? Maybe I'm being too critical and I'm sure people will say I am, but to say I'm not going to go out in the cold street to stay for ages because of my health is it not just like a common decency to think well maybe I'll do my hello to everybody at stage door before I go and hang out backstage with my friends who've come to see me in the show so that my fans can go home and so I'm not leaving them on the street all night I even think it would have been good from for someone from the theatre or someone in Darren's crew or whatever to say like he's not gonna be stage door in and um, but we'll come out when he can or even just paying some kind of mind to the people who are outside Yes, I very much understand that stage door is not part of your ticket and is not expected but to also not see the people who are supporting you and your show as people feels kind of icky to me. It felt dismissive that when people tried to tell Darren the reason why there were so few of us there was because it was dangerous and he just said like, no, don't talk, I've got a speech. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Do you mind if I just give my little spiel really quick? Yeah, yeah. sorry. It's, 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 and I understand he probably heard like a bunch of noise or whatever, but I don't know. I just, I did also start thinking like, is there a point where you get to a certain level of like celebrity or fame or whatever and fans don't become kind of people in a way anymore. I don't know like that's that's probably an overarching simplified vision of it. I don't know. I was also quite disappointed by the theatre anyway. I tried basically I tried to drop off a delivery to Darren the day before we saw the show. So me and Lucy have got a small business and we had some little shop of horrors items that we wanted to gift him um, for his like time in the show I guess. And I asked somebody who was going into stage door like, oh, would I be able to just drop a delivery in, please? And they were like, who's it for? And I said, for Darren. And this person literally laughed in my face. I was like, <laughs> he's not going to take that. And they're like, <laughs> 
he's just not gonna take it, so no. I don't know, it made me feel very embarrassed and like I'd cut off a lock of my hair and written him a note in my blood or something. Like fair enough if he wasn't taking gifts. But like, I don't know, there's a way of saying things. I just thought as well, for a show that has very much been sold on its star billing and star casting, that they were very dismissive of the fans who were buying those Broadway priced off Broadway tickets and supporting the show. And I'm not saying you need to like lay out a red carpet and be like, thank you so much. But there's just a way of talking to people and a way of treating people that I feel like was very much missing. What do you think though? I do really wanna know. Do you think it's the job of a theater to provide security or some kind of surveillance to protect their patrons? Does a top billing performer have a responsibility to think of or consider the safety and health of leaving fans outside waiting for over an hour just to say hello if that was only ever your intention to just say hello am i an entitled brat who needs to shut up <laughs> i'm sure some of you will think so if anything i just hope that this video maybe makes people think about like if you're gonna go to stage door think about the safety aspects of it and make sure that you feel safe before putting yourself in that situation. I did not feel safe. I think if I were to stage door a show again, I would very much be looking, is there security? Am I gonna be safe if something happens here? Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think. Obviously, I've said in this video, I did go to Broadway and I saw six shows and I was thinking I might do like a little rundown of them, little ranking. One show I thought was so awful. It's actually comedic, so I might do a whole video on that. And just generally talking about the trip and whatever, but I will be doing some more videos. So I will see you soon. I love you lots. Bye.